Okay, before I start getting into the actual episode, I need to throw up a couple disclaimers. Number one, for the past few seasons, traditionally I have uploaded these videos during Thursday evenings. I no longer have the ability to do that. My work and school life gets real cluttered in the Wednesday and Thursday areas, so now, Friday is when I'm going to try and make these videos, and even then it still might not entirely work. It's almost 7 p.m. when I'm making this right now. Number two, I have not seen Token Teens or Samoa, okay? So I can't give exactly the best feedback on Steven and Monica, but most people seem to think I'm not missing much for Monica, so I might be a little lucky there, right? So... Uh, my first impressions of Survivor Second Chances, I'm getting real hyped for this. I'm really hoping that this is going to be the best All-Star season I've seen, and that hopefully it can break a lot of curses or patterns that's been going on with either Survivor or Reality TV, because, one, um, this is the first time in, like, forever where we've been to... Um, no, 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 yeah, yeah, first time ever when we were doing the back-to-back -back seasons where, um... In a new location, the first season that we see is actually positively portraying the location for once. It looks like a place that, you know, I'd actually like to go to. So, yeah, that's nice to see for a change. And also, even though this is a tad bit of a dislike, I don't have one huge person that I want to see win out of this All-Star cast because for literally... Every All-Star season that I've seen, Survivor or not All-Star, there has been one person at the beginning of the season that I want to see win. They always make it to the end, and they always come in second. Yeah, kind of depressing, even though, um, for each season that... All, all, for each All-Star season that isn't Survivor, less people downturn themselves, so hopefully less people downturn themselves here. And then, of course, I'm really hoping that the curse of Australian Outback players downturning themselves and getting a lot of hate towards their season when they return gets broken also. I've gone into that particular one before, right? And also, did you guys notice that we actually had a real bona fide intro for this season? Huh? This is the first time we've had an intro, I think, since, like, what, South Pacific? Maybe One World? <laughs> Nice, although they probably only did that because it's a longer episode. And uh, did I notice any clues as to um, who the winners of this season could be? Well, I did get one shot, you know, towards the end where they did show, like, red or pink smoke. That possibly could mean that someone on that tribe wins. And also, there was a shot that could be Joe, Jeremy, and PG, you know, standing in one area. But, whatever. Just thought I'd throw that out there because previously they have put some stuff in intros, although it's really stupid that they do that, yeah. And then Jeff's opening speech is, well, he doesn't bother with anything grandiose and instead just tells it to um, all the people out there honestly. I really like that he did that because it illustrates that this not only is a different Survivor season, but it could also be a very different All-Star season, as I've already alluded to, so... That really made me get into it, and then, <laughs> that bit where they're all pillaging for the supplies, and then they're all rowing for the rice. That was amazing! <laughs> Kelly Wigglesworth jumping into the water and actually outswimming both rafts, even though Wu managed to pass her, but I'm pretty darn sure that she still beat Joe, because, here's the thing, okay? They do show Wu climbing up the boat and then hugging the big bag of rice. Then they show a bit of Kelly in the water and then to in front of her and her right you see someone climbing up the boat. Now I at first thought it was Joe but when I looked back, here's the thing. You notice how to Kelly's left and behind her you see her tribe doing this? That indicates to me that the person climbing the rope isn't Joe, it's Wu, so... Yeah, Kelly still beat Joe to the raft. So in essence, she beat, you know, an entire 10-person raft and an 8.5-person raft because Wu jumped about halfway in. Actually, no, he jumped like three-fourths inside, so... Yeah. 
Well, glad that she got that little bit of a shiny moment. Yeah, Steven, she's gonna wear out. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> so, after that little shenanigan there, the tribes all go to their respective beaches, and then my overall impressions of them were that it's very different tribes, because, once again, we kind of got the little bit there, well, it seems like the blue-ish tribe, although on uh, Wikipedia, the tribe color actually shows green, whatever. It's not an exact real shade of blue, because if we were going to get the real uh, punctual people in the comments, they probably would have been arguing that the color of buff was teal, whatever, okay? It just looked blue originally, but I'm perfectly willing to say green or whatever it is, so. The thing was with them, it seemed like originally they'd be the people that you know, um, would um, be uh, a little bit more dominant and um, definitely have the real good makers on their side, but at the same time turn out to be pretty damn divisive. Well, that's what usually seems to be happening with these blue teams, and I did kind of see that there, but given what was going on before the challenge, I had been thinking that they were more likely to lose because here's the thing. Um, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead, but then I'm going to jump back. The uh, pink tribe, they were really only focusing on Steven as possibly somebody to go, but for the blue tribe, we had multiple people, so... Yeah, a bit of a giveaway, though, even though I would have been satisfied with really either tribe going to tribal. I didn't want them to win that much over the other tribe, so whatever. Right, but, you know, at first it looked like that they were, you know, perfectly comfortable doing everything, and I gotta be honest, I actually don't really have anyone that I, um, dislike on that tribe, even though I did, uh, bitch about Abby a lot during her season, but now I've got no problems with her being out there, because after Caramon, pretty much everyone stopped talking about Philippines, so, you know, I put it behind me and that we've, uh, moved on from that. Yeah. And I thought it was definitely interesting how at least Jeff, as the old school player, was admitting that he had learned from his mistakes and was definitely um, a lot observant as for how the game was going, although I'm not entirely sure how he's eh, going to be able to pull it off, because here's the thing. He states that mentally he seems to be getting closer to the new school bit, but I'm not entirely sure that... Um, all of his social game aspects are at that point because he seems to be running his mouth off a little bit for next episode. Hmm. Gonna be interesting to see there, because he did do a tiny bit of that, but to be fair, so is Kimmy. Yeah. And I find it interesting that we didn't get that much from her this episode. A tad bit disappointed by that, but there is 20 people, which is something that they haven't done for a while. Actually, no, no, they did that for Bluffus Water, and they were gonna do that for San Juan del Sur, another mind, another mind, yeah. And then as for what was going on in the Pink Tribe, well, even though this tribe does have more of the people that I think could go um, downhill a little bit, or think that they don't really have that good chances at this, like Keith, I don't really expect it to get any better this time, to be honest, and then there's Steven, well, first impressions are, like I was thinking, that this guy seems to be pretty much doomed, going all over the place, stumbling everywhere, but the good thing is, he at least is admitting it, that he knows what's going on with him, and that he says, well, this is actually what happened to me last time, and I'll, I will be honest, I'd probably be in his position, because, well, you've seen me stand up in a couple of these videos, you know, when I have to get that door, so... You know that in many ways I resemble him. Glasses, real thin guy, smart about various things, but totally sucking in others. Yeah, I can't tell you how many, uh, minor arguments I've gotten into, into with my uncle when we have to do, like, uh, physical work and how my technique is just run all over the place. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, brother, right. And I'm also really interested in how uh, Joe and uh, Jeremy seem to be repeating their games from last time. Because, you know, Jeremy, he makes a uh, fairly obvious alliance with all the big guys right away, even though he did seem to be smooth-talking a couple of the women. Not entirely sure what his merit is, but last time he was on, his thought process didn't get explained that much. It might not happen here. And then Joe, you know, he seems to be just playing the nice guy, trying to help everybody out, and since there's no love triangle thingy, that was totally stupid. 
he might actually be able to integrate himself better and actually be able to play his own game, which is, um, something that I'm somewhat interested in seeing, because last time, just me and Joe just... Yeah, he definitely got way overhyped. Now that, um, there's a lot more people that seem to be matching his hype, I'm hoping that, um... He puts out something that's different from last time that I can be satisfied with him because the thing was I didn't like the guy but everybody kept hyping him so many people picked him as their bit to win but unlike uh, Tom and Kim I was just looking at him going not seeing this I'm not getting the vibe from him I mean like he could do something but he isn't so that was just real depressing last time so I'm really hoping that this time uh, he behaves differently that I can be satisfied with him, whatever happens. I'd really like that. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about Terry. Um, he has um, definitely admitted that he needs to change his gameplay, but if you look at what happened to him in this episode, hmm, not entirely sure, buddy. Goes to show that my prediction about him getting his DBC did last time, I'm not entirely sure that's happening, especially since there's, um, more people than there was when he played, because he played against 16 people, and, uh, well, for the second half of the game, he was invincible. Yeah. Only it is social gameplay sucked, but as I mentioned in one of my Wolves Apart videos, very little gameplay happened at all that season. This season, we're getting a ton of gameplay. And then we have the bit where Kelly Wentworth is actually able to uh, find the clue <laughs> to the idol. And when I learned that they were um, hiding the idol at a challenge, I go, holy crap, they've added a totally another layer to this game. That's awesome, yeah. Now, you can totally tell that they're doing this just because it's an all-star season, but I don't mind that. These are returning people. Change the game up a little bit. As long as it's not too outlandish and you're not putting an idol that shouldn't be there, I still haven't forgiven you for Carabone, Jeff. Right. But I still thought that that was a good idea, and I also like how this edit is actually portraying Kelly Wentworth to be how she actually is, because... In San Juan del Sur, she was portrayed as like the ditzy blonde of her tribe, like what Jacqueline was on a Coyopa, but then... In her last episode, it's revealed that she's actually a super fan and has a nice brain, but then she's booted. That just sucked. So, yeah, it's nice to see her be out here as her. So, I definitely will be satisfied with her gameplay, although whether or not I'm going to completely like her at the end, hmm, we'll see about that. Because she was one of the people I was uh, less enthusiastic about coming back, but now that I'm seeing her actually play her game, yeah. Then as for that challenge, um, I like the fact that they're doing this challenge, although I really wish that they hadn't tried to phrase it as the first challenge over again, because there were differences between this challenge and when they originally did it. I think they should have disordered it as, think old school, think original, just something like that, you know, but yeah. It was a nice race between the teams, and I got nervous because I was like, wait a sec, what tribe is going to win this? Oh, is uh, Wentworth going to uh, grab the idol? But I was like, they keep showing her looking back and forth, and like, really? She's standing at the back of the tribe, kind of like I would, just because I don't like too many people being crowded around me, but like seriously, they're not gonna turn around all of a sudden because she has to take a good few steps back to get that idol, you know, and even if they look over that way, they're not gonna turn all the way, come on, go get it, and like, you know, you could have done the, uh, oh my god, trick, trick, everyone would have bought that, seriously. Right. But, um, I had been thinking that it was a tad bit more likely that, uh, Takeo would lose in terms of they did, but the editing of the challenge, at least, did a good job making me believe that that might not happen. Been stupid phone. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to you in a sec, Dad. Anyway, um, then we get the twist that they need to go to tribal immediately. Nice. Keeps them on their toes. 
especially since that tribal actually seemed to have a missing bit that Dr. Ross keeps talking about. Cause like, um, apparently the big bit that they omitted from this episode was Jeff, uh, well he, you know, in PG, PG! Why do I keep calling him PG? It's PG! I've seen China now! Come on, you would think I would be on top of this, what's my problem? Well, he and PG were probably going to be the swing votes of this whole equation. Apparently that there was a bit in there where he asked two people if they were still going to go the way that they were planning to, more his words than uh, mine. And then uh, Wu did a key from some of those sir where he said, well, yeah, yeah, stick to the plan. Here, and I was watching bits where he and Terry were talking at the Trump, and I'm like, guys, you're not really helping yourself out here. Like, one of the first couple of questions, well, they're like, how the interaction was totally bamboozling them. I just didn't like how they answered it. They weren't really doing that much on themselves. Now, Jeff Varner did give the same kind of an answer, but he projected an air of confidence into his voice that made me go, yeah, 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 he's satisfactory answering that question. No one's gonna question him. So then as for the vote, I had been thinking it was um, more likely that Abby was going to go. Especially since I thought there was a nice chance that Kelly could, I mean, Wentworth would play her idol, but she didn't, but then as the votes kept going back and forth with Abby being in the lead and then Vetus going, I was like, actually, you know what, I think Vetus is gone, because the way that you're doing the vote, this doesn't feel the same, you know, I think somebody flipped here, because this wasn't like a uh, caramone, where the lines were a little bit more obvious, and it was really just a question of how Cochran and Don, I think it was, portraying their final votes here. There were quite a few people that could be going either which way, but just, you know, something told me this doesn't feel straightforward. And it turns out that not only did uh, Jeff flip the script, Spencer did also, amazingly. I wish we knew what his rationale was, because once Dalton Ross revealed that uh, a little bit with Jeff was cut, that explains it. And I had been thinking that he could um, have voted out Vetus, but Spencer, I really want to know what he did there, yeah. So, Vetus goes in a little bit of a blind side, but not much of a blind side, really, because it was either him or Abby going, the voting made it that much obvious to us, yeah. And, uh, did Vetus downgrade himself in any way? Nah, it was mainly the same mistake that he made last time. He got comfortable, and then it got pulled under him, except this time... He knew that there was a much greater chance of it getting pulled under him. You know, that's why when he gets up, he goes, All right, you guys got me. See ya. You know, he walks right out of there going, Hmm? Huh? Although he does seem actually more pissed about it because he did drop the line. If I had known I was going to be the first boot, I wouldn't have come out here at all. Well, Ponomy does agree with you on that because you do have to make several sacrifices to um, go out there and... One has to realize that, like, you... It's not just a simple, oh, yeah, 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 you come out here and then we can take care of things for you. Because apparently, even when you're in the pre-jury bit, you still have to be at Ponderosa for a while. And even then, I don't think once the jury starts that um, all the um, pre-jury people are actually allowed to go home. I think they actually go to someplace else for the rest of the game. I could be wrong on that, but I could have sworn Tom from Palau mentioned that in an interview that I heard like a year ago. Yeah, that'd be interesting to uh, find out there. And then Spencer, he himself said that he had to give up a semester of college to uh, go out there. And then uh, John from Marquesas, he had to give up a semester of law school to go out there, albeit those two made the jury, you know, so it's a little bit more justified. But Vetus, you know, three days in? Hmm. Yeah. As for the preview for next episode, well, all it showed was Jeff mouthing off some more, so we gotta see what happens there. And then, uh, probes to 
his prediction is that it's going to be the same tribe going to tribal bowl. Um, I'm tempted to go against him, but I'm not really too opposed to seeing either tribe go. I just want it to be a fun episode. So sorry if this video was a little bit all over the place. You know, it's the first episode, it's been a while since I made a Survivor video, and I actually only just finished watching the episode 12 minutes before I started making the video, so yeah.